This might be the most hopeless plane crash incident you've ever heard of. The pilot was locked out of the cockpit simply because he went to use the restroom, ultimately leading to the plane crashing with him helplessly on the outside. This tragic accident took the lives of 150 people, leaving behind over 600 fragmented remains. This is the chilling story of an airborne murder. So, what really happened that day? On the morning of March 24, 2015, German Wings Flight 9525 departed from Barcelona, Spain, bound for Dusseldorf, Germany. On board were 150 people, including six crew members and 144 passengers. After climbing to an altitude of 11,580 meters, the plane entered cruise mode, and at first, everything seemed normal. But just minutes later, the plane, without any clearance, started descending from 11,580 meters to 9,118 meters. Ground control immediately tried to radio the pilot, but there was no response. The plane continued to lose altitude, and ground control repeatedly attempted to contact the crew with no success. At 9.40 a.m., the plane's signal suddenly disappeared from the radar. Ground control realized the situation was critical and issued a distress alert, announcing that the passengers faced imminent danger. When the plane's signal vanished, there were only two possibilities. Either it was flying very low, or it had already crashed. At 9.41 a.m., the plane tragically crashed in the Alps. The remote crash site was inaccessible by road, so rescue helicopters were dispatched. When they arrived, they found the wreckage scattered across a wide area, with the victims' remains everywhere, a horrific scene. Despite extensive searches, no survivors were found. This meant all 150 people on board perished. However, both black boxes were recovered, and after analysis, the truth behind the crash started to emerge. According to the cockpit voice recorder, there was a sharp descent over an eight-minute span from the high altitude until the crash. During this time, no distress signal was sent. So, what really happened? Let's rewind to the last few minutes in the cockpit. At 9.30 a.m., the plane was in cruise mode, and everything seemed normal. At this point, the co-pilot repeatedly urged the captain to go to the restroom. The captain didn't think much of it and left the cockpit. But as soon as he did, the co-pilot initiated descent mode, and the plane began descending rapidly. The captain, noticing the change from the restroom, rushed back to the cockpit. But by then, the co-pilot had firmly locked the door, refusing entry. No matter how hard the captain pounded on the door, there was no response from inside. That's when the captain realized the co-pilot had taken over the plane. After the September 11th attacks, cockpit security was reinforced to protect the crew. Now, access was only possible through an intercom request or an emergency code. However, ultimate control was still held by the person inside. If the person inside refused entry, even explosives couldn't break down the door. In the final minutes before the crash, the captain desperately pleaded, but the door remained locked. Meanwhile, the passengers had also realized what was happening, and a profound fear of death spread through the cabin, silencing everyone. The plane continued to plummet until a tremendous impact ended the lives of all 150 people aboard. When this investigation report was released, people were shocked, calling this an airborne murder. Why did the co-pilot decide to take everyone down with him? German police, after investigating his home, found medications for mental health issues and multiple sick leave notes. A recent note even indicated that his doctor had advised him to stop working. Yet, Lubitz ignored the advice, destroyed the records, and hid his depression from the airline. He continued working as if everything was normal, even as his condition worsened. Four days before the crash, he developed suicidal thoughts and began researching information on the Airbus 320, learning how to lock the cockpit door. Once the plane reached cruising altitude, he urged the captain to leave the cockpit to put his horrific suicide plan into action. After this tragedy, aviation authorities in multiple countries quickly introduced new rules, mandating that two crew members always be present in the cockpit to prevent similar incidents. 